Today we've got the Rolex Submariner Reference 114060, often referred to as the Sub C. This is the model with no date and a ceramic bezel released at Basel World in 2012. It's similar to the 14060 with some subtle but key differences that we'll get into. While the Cyclops magnifiers on the Chrysler are so characteristic of Rolex, the no date models are the ones the hardcore collectors are mostly after. They're not only interested in them because of the clean dial symmetry, but also because Rolex didn't used to put the date on these models originally, so there's some purity to them. There are a lot of nice things to say about Rolex watches that make them special. A watch like the Submariner is often imitated, and here at GMT-5 we try to focus on good all-around products. A robust and accurate movement, a solid case, nice style, comfortable bracelet, and Rolex is the epitome of that perfect package, so we'll talk about some of those niceties as we progress in the review. The Submariner still has a 40mm case crafted from a solid block of 904L stainless steel. For a dive watch, the Submariner has the perfect dimensions. It measures 40mm wide, 47mm lug to lug, and it's 13mm thick. It has a 20mm lug width. Speaking of lugs, this is the one change Rolex made to the case design that people either love or hate. The lugs themselves are wider, almost as wide as the outside links on the Oyster bracelet, which gives a chunkier, boxier appearance over prior models and makes the Submariner wear a bit larger than you would expect for a 40mm watch. Personally, I enjoy both the new and the old designs, but it's definitely a subtle change in design that makes a big difference to some people. The bezel is also new. Rolex now uses Cerachrome bezel inserts, which are resistant to scratching, fading, and corrosion. The ceramic bezel inserts are another area that divides collectors since ceramic readily reflects light and has more of a blingy look to it. These new bezel inserts aren't easy to change, which is potentially an issue if you're one of those Rolex collectors who likes to swap bezel inserts. They're not only manufactured and installed differently on these new models, but ceramic is also more brittle, so removing it yourself isn't a good idea unless you crack the insert. Operating the crown is likely the smoothest I've experienced. When you feel the spring pushing the crown away from the case and the buttery smooth twist, it's one of those really small details that Rolex just gets right. The dial is one of the most replicated aspects of a Submariner. So many brands make dive watches that borrow this design and it's easy to see why. It has ultimate legibility, it's clean, and especially symmetrical without the date. It's really the most iconic dive watch design out there. This reference has what's referred to are the maxi dial and hands, which basically means the hands and hour markers are more pronounced than usual, although this is sort of becoming the standard for new Rolex Submariners and GMTs. This does add more of a tool look, but I don't think it really compromises the sophistication you expect from Rolex. Around the dial are raised hour markers filled with chromolite that glows blue instead of the green in the previous model. The sapphire crystal has anti-reflective coating on the underside only, and being flat, it's fairly reflective. I hear Rolex does this intentionally to make the watch appear shinier from a distance, but I don't know if that's true. I personally prefer double anti-reflective coating because I want an invisible crystal, but it's a minor complaint. Inside the 114060 is Rolex's in-house caliber 3130, a COSC certified chronometer. It's an automatic movement with 48 hours power reserve and Rolex's parachrome hairspring. It's worth a few seconds on what parachrome hairsprings are and why they're important. The patented parachrome hairspring was researched and developed entirely by Rolex. The hairspring is a key part of what regulates timekeeping in a watch, and shock and magnetic fields can seriously disturb timekeeping, which is why watchmakers don't use steel hairsprings but instead Nivarok. Nivarox is an alloy less prone to shock and more resistant to magnets. Parachrome is, is a, a Rolex invented alloy that is 10 times more shock resistant and is virtually immune to any magnetic force. Rolex claims this is an integral factor in its movement accuracy. You know, not a lot of frills here in the 3130. It's a very accurate movement, it's very serviceable, it's simple, but a, a very robust movement that's likely going to outlast the wearer. The bracelet alone is a reason to purchase this watch. Also made of 904L stainless steel, it's the most comfortable bracelet I've ever worn and is exceptionally well made. It's the same tapered oyster bracelet that's always accompanied some mariners, but it's superior to earlier versions in a couple of ways. First, there's glide lock, which I have to admit is a good reason to consider a newer model over an older one. Glide lock allows you to adjust the length of the bracelet incrementally without using any tools. So if you need to slip it over a wetsuit, you don't have to deal with any hidden fold-over extensions. For most of us though, it's great because on the fly as your wrist swells or shrinks throughout the day, you can tweak it and always enjoy a comfortable fit. Also, the clasp doesn't seem as bulky. Some Mariner clasps of the past were pretty tall and jutted out from the bracelet. There's still some presence here, but it has a lower profile than previous models. 
New or old, you have to admit Rolex gets the details right. Every aspect of the watch looks and feels like engineers and designers spend a considerable amount of time thinking about even small changes. Nothing is overlooked. Granted, you're paying for that. The 114060 retails for $7,500. That's serious money, but when you see it in the metal and try it on, you can begin to understand why people consider Rolexes to be the best machine-made product around.